Hello, today we revisit a video that has become one of our most successful in recent times. I'm looking at the top 10 scary rooms that should have stayed secret and this is part 3. Just want to make it clear like I did in the last two videos that sometimes these rooms should have only stayed secret for the people who wanted to hide them. We're probably quite glad though that they're no longer secret. To find out how bad it gets, let's jump right into our number 10 with the Nope Room. This was a name given to a room posted to reddit by user Columbian Thunder. He found that his house had a bunker below it. After squeezing his phone through one of the cracks in the door, he took these creepy pictures. Look away now if you don't like insects. At first glance, the bunker looks like it's full of spiders, but actually they're crickets. They don't have fangs or the ability to bite. That may make some people feel a little bit better about this room, but others are probably just as creeped out. One reddit commenter said, this looks like both the scene in Aliens when they peeked about the ceiling tile and the scene in Cloverfield when they turned on the infrared on the camera in the subway. Next up at number 9 now we have the Lottery Killer. This story comes from Plant City, Florida where an inspection of an air conditioning unit led to a crazy discovery. During the inspection the worker found a wall panel that looked a little bit out of place. When he pushed it back he was amazed to find a carpeted walkway that led to a secret hidden room. The room had stained wooden walls and a carpeted floor. There were electrical cables strewn everywhere, a light switch and even a bathroom that came out at the wall. There were also personal items scattered around including two license plates screwed into the wall directly above the door. The story of this room spread quickly and then a huge twist came. A man who heard the story came forward to say that he had some information about the house. It had previously been owned by Dee Dee Moore. She's a person convicted of the famous lottery killing in Florida, a murder that resulted in the death of local lottery winner Abraham Shakespeare. The license plate found screwed up in the attic was a match with Dee Dee Moore's car. It's it's thought that a convicted killer used this room as a place to hide from the police as they searched for her. Moving on to number 8 now we have the Soviet Bunker. In 2017 a man discovered an abandoned Soviet era bunker and was amazed to find an almost pristine looking area frozen in time. The man found the bunker while wandering through surrounding land near an old factory in Russia. He discovered a small concrete building and decided to take a look. After passing through a dark corridor and two giant metal doors he found the main bunker which amazingly still had a working electric electric light and ventilation. The place was loaded up with old newspaper cuttings, photographs, boots, tools, medicine and even old gas masks. The boxes appear to date back to World War II. The Russian government has never acknowledged this bunker's existence, leading many rumours to sprout up online about when and why it was used. Moving on now to number 7 we have the scratching. This story was told by reddit user Wacker. They said that when they first moved into their house he was doing some renovations with one of his friends to make the place more suitable for his future family, including his pregnant wife. He was renovating the TV room in the basement when he noticed a closet which was inside the stairs. He never really noticed it before so he opened it up and found another door on the left that was concealed. The previous owner had never mentioned anything about this. He went to bed that night and hardly slept at all. There were scratching noises coming from the basement. He presumed it was mice and made a note to put mice traps down the next day. Fast forward two months and his friend John was over to help with the renovation. He mentioned the basement and John insisted they go through this secret door to check out what's behind it. They tried to open it but neither of them could open it all of the way. It was only half open. They squeezed through to a small dark room, too small for them to stand up in. They shed some light and saw that the floor and walls were made of concrete except one wall on the opposite side of the door that had a giant two way mirror covering the whole thing. On the other side of the mirror was his own bedroom. The camera had a tape in it that was full of footage. Someone had been filming him and his family from behind the mirror for as long as they have been there. Perhaps this was why the previous owner never said anything at all. Next up at number 6 now we have the Area 51 autopsy room. I'm sure many of you guys have heard of Area 51, the military base where conspiracy theorists say the US military hid the wreckage from the 1947 crashing of a UFO in Roswell, New Mexico. For many years this story remained exactly that, just a story. Then in 1995 a man called Ray Santilli released some footage that claimed to show an alien autopsy in Area 51. The film showed men in white coats apparently dissecting the dead alien in this mysterious room. For UFO hunters this was undeniable proof that a UFO crashed in Roswell and that the US government was hiding the evidence from the public. Moving on to number 5 now we have The Prisoner. This is another story that was shared by a Redditor. Nuke Storm said that he was exploring his new home one day when he found a hidden door in the corner of his attic. He only noticed it while moving around some boxes up there. The door was about 4 foot tall with a metal grate 
fastened over the hole. He opened up the door carefully, not knowing what he would find. Inside, he found a single light, a small hard bed, and walls with foam padding. At first, it seemed odd, but not too scary. That was until he noticed one thing. The inside of the door had no handle and no lock. Whoever was sleeping in here was meant to be trapped in there, kept as a prisoner by whoever was on the other side of that door. The padded walls meant that if you were locked in there, nobody would ever hear you, no matter how loud you screamed. Who was kept here? Why were they imprisoned? And perhaps more worryingly, where are they now? Next up at number four now, we have the Mole Man. 121 Mortimer Road in East London has a secret. Back in 2006, the front of the house looked like a crumbling ruin. The roof had caved in, three of the windows were boarded up, and cracked paint peeled from the wrinkled walls. But behind the house lied something astonishing. The owner, William Little, had been digging holes behind the house since the early 1960s. By chipping away at the dirt with a shovel and a homemade pulley, he created a web of tunnels and caverns. Some of them were 26 feet deep and spread for 65 feet in every direction from the house. By doing so, he had shifted over 3,500 cubic feet of dirt. The council had been vaguely aware of his digging, but had no idea it had reached this extent. When one side of the street lost power one day after he tapped into a 450 volt cable, the council admitted that Mr. Little's tunnel were now putting the neighborhood at risk. They obtained a court order to temporarily evict him in order to enable engineers to fill the holes with cement. Mr. Little was billed for the £100,000 cost. The mole man, as locals called him, was questioned about why he dug the holes. He only ever said it was a wine cellar. His neighbors seemed to think that he lied though, and there is much more to the story of the mole man. Next up at number three now, we have the weapons. The pictures you're about to see were posted online by a guy who bought his new house for pretty cheap after the previous owner passed away. He had already seen the basement when viewing the house, but it wasn't until a lot of stuff was cleared out that he noticed a suspicious piece of wood next to the stairs. When he tried to move it, it just wouldn't budge. He grabbed some tools and managed to pry the wood away from the staircase and the wall. What he saw inside shocked him. It was a small room, only about four by four. Inside were gun cases, military ammo crates, and a big gray metal container. This was more than just a hobby. Whoever put this here needed a lot of weapons and guns. Also, there was a large safe. He estimated it weighed at least 200 pounds. One of the crates even contained a grenade. Then there was a bag full of hundreds of thousands of pennies. Why not keep money in notes to save space? Well, if the economy ever collapsed and money had no value, the copper in the pennies would actually be worth a lot simply because of what they're made of. It looks like this person might have been prepared preparing for the end of times. Were they wrong about it happening, or is it still yet to come? Moving on to number two now, we have the subway bedroom. In December 2015, authorities in Berlin were shocked to find a secret room on the city's U9 subway line, specifically a bedroom. It was discovered during a routine fire inspection of the tunnels. The bedroom was complete with a table, chair, lamp, TV, and of course, a bed, which was very neatly made. The next question was now, whose bedroom is this? Well, nobody seems to know, but there are some theories floating about. German social media suggested it may be students saving on rent, or perhaps artists staging some kind of performance. Authorities have a different theory though. They seem to think it was created by someone involved in Berlin's graffiti scene. Tagging trains and platforms with spray paint is still a common activity in Berlin. It's thought that this bedroom was the hideout of one of those underground graffiti artists. And finally, number one now, we have the House of Knives. In 2015, police officers arrested a woman who tried to stab an officer. When they entered her home, they were shocked at one of the rooms they found. The whole place was covered wall to wall with five hundred bladed weapons. Photos of the home showed a number of dark rooms like this with hundreds of knives and several fake skulls scattered around the rooms. Fake severed limbs were also seen hanging in the home along with fake skeletons with knives stuck in them. When police arrived at the house they found her hiding in one of these rooms lurking in the dark behind the many rows of blades. When she eventually came out officers used a stun gun on her and quickly took her into custody. Nobody was injured. The county sheriff said the woman was a danger to the community and she faced a number of charges, including assault of an officer and resisting arrest. Okay, the video is over, which means it's time to respond to your questions and comments. I'm taking these ones today from the Signs That Society Is Doomed video that I did. IMDG Tech said, we live in a society. Big capital letters. That got quite a lot of upvotes. Am I missing something here with this comment? I mean, 
you know, they're not wrong. We do live in a society. Is there anything more to this comment? Perhaps it's gone over my head, but uh, I don't know. I thought I'd leave it here for you guys anyway. Adam Cole Bebe says, yep, we are doomed. I thank dumb world leaders for ruining our society. A lot of you seem to agree with this comment and it sparked off quite a debate. I do agree with this, but only up to a point. I think sometimes people overestimate how much power an individual leader can have. Sometimes it is a lot, but sometimes they may need the help of many other leaders, communities, or politicians to get the job done. That means it can also take many more than just one person to ruin everything. Interesting comment either way, and it was cool to see you guys discussing it. J Mac Hero had a comment for me saying, dude, energy is not a problem. We can easily get energy from the sun. Global warming is the main problem. Definitely, yeah, I totally agree. We have the capabilities now to provide the whole world with clean, cheap, and efficient energy, like from the sun, as you mentioned. The problem I stated though was how to get countries to that point where they can and want to do it. Also, yeah, global warming is probably the greatest threat to humans in this century, at least. Some people are already starting to feel the effects now, but one day it could be everyone. Jeff Andrasak said, I know how to deal with overpopulation, the Hunger Games. Great. I know Jeff is joking there, but there may actually be people out there who think a genuine Hunger Games style battle between everyone on the planet would be the best way to tackle overpopulation. Let's just hope they never get elected. And if they do, let's hope you guys are all on my team. Okay, thank you very much for all your comments. I love reading and responding to them, so keep them coming. If you want to be featured in the next video, thanks for watching. As always, my name is Danny Burke, and I'll see you all in the next one. <laughs>